temple place pointed out to me. The Bhageva instructed the monks. The monks pointed out to her a suitable place. Then she had a beautiful dwelling built and all about it planted mango trees. The dwelling, surrounded on all sides by rows of mango trees, abounding in shade and water, with its white ground strewn with sand, like nets of pearls, was altogether enchanting. The woman decorated the monastery with tapestries of many colors and with flower wreaths and perfume wreaths like a mansion of Davis. Put up an oil lamp, wrapped the mango trees with a new cloth, and dedicated it to the order. Afterwards she died and was reborn in the realm of the 33. For her there appeared a great mansion surrounded by a mango grove. There, surrounded by a host of nymphs, she enjoyed Deva bliss. The venerable elder monk Mahamagalana approached her and asked. Deva like is your mango grove, charming. Imposing is the place here, resounding with many a musical instrument, reverberating with the noises of a host of nymphs. And here a great lamp of gold forever burns surrounded on all sides by trees with cloth fruits. Because of what is your mango grove? Charming, imposing the place here? Because of what do you prosper here, and there arise whatever are those delights that are dear to your heart? I ask you, Devi of great majesty, what merit did you perform when you were born a human being? Because of what is your brilliant majesty thus and your beauty illuminates all the quarters? That Devada, delighted at being questioned by Magalana, when asked the question explained of what deed this was the fruit. When in a former birth I was born a human being among men in the world of men I had monastery surrounded by mango trees built for the order. When the monastery was finished and I was having the ceremony of dedication prepared, covering the mango trees and making fruits of cloth. Having lit a lamp there and having offered food to the order of monks without any comparison, with my own hands, gladly, I bestowed it on the order. Because of this is my mango grove charming, imposing the place here, resounding with many a musical instrument, reverberating with the noises of a host of nymphs. And here a great lamp of gold forever burns surrounded on all sides by trees with cloth fruits. Because of this is my beauty such, because of this do I prosper here, and there arise whatever are those delights that are dear to my heart. I make known to you, monk of great majesty, what merit I performed when I was born a human being. Because of this is my brilliant majesty thus and my beauty illuminates all the quarters. Vimanavithu Vimanavithu Yellow Mansion After the final Nibbana of the Bhagava And when King Ajatazatu had erected a great Thupa in Rajagaha for his share of the Bhagava's relics and had performed the ceremony of dedication. A laywoman follower with four flowers of a Kosataki creeper approached to make offering regardless of dangers on the way. Thereupon a cow with a young calf rushing forward furiously attacked her with its horns, killing her. She was reborn in the realm of the 33, appeared. Saka was going in his chariot to sport in the pleasuance, and he questioned her in these verses. Lady of the golden yellow dress and banner, adorned with golden yellow jewelry, anointed with golden yellow sandalwood, of golden yellow lotus wreaths. Lady of the golden yellow palace and beds, seats and bowls, of the golden yellow umbrella, chariot, horses and fan. What deed did you do, lovely one, in a former human existence? Davida, when asked, tell of what deed this is the fruit. She explained in these verses. There is creeper, reverend sir, called Kosataki, bitter, not prized. I bore four flowers from it to the Thupa. With a mind devout towards the teacher's relics with my attention wrapped upon it, I did not heed its path. So the cow killed me, my longing for the thupa unfulfilled. Had I then stored up, greater indeed than this would have been. By that deed, O Deva chief, Magava, elephant of Devas, getting rid of the human body I have come to your companionship. When he had heard this Magava, overlord of the thirty, elephant of Devas, Gladdening the 33 said this to Madali. See Madali, this marvelous, diversified fruit of a deed. Even a trifle done for one writing a gift is merit, of great fruit. When the mind has faith and bliss, 
no gift is trifling to a Tathagata or a self-awakened one or to his disciples. Come you, Madali, we too could honor repeatedly. Happy is the accumulation of merits the relics of the Tathagata. Whether he is alive or had passed out the fruit is even for a mind that is even, for as a result of mental resolve beings go to a good rebirth. Verily Tathagata s arise for the good of many so that, having done a service, to heaven go the donors. When this had been said Sokka left the plaisance and for seven days paid homage in the Kulamani shrine. After a time when the venerable elder monk Narada was on a deva tour he told him in verses of that occurrence. The elder told the recensionists. They included it in the collection. Vimanavathu Vimanavathu Sugarcane Mansion This is similar in the text to the former Sugarcane Mansion. But here the mother-in-law used a clod of earth when she killed the daughter-in-law. Because of this the stories have been handed down separately. Having made effulgent the earth with the devas. You shine forth like the moon and the sun with your splendor and beauty, glory, incandescence, like Brahma outshining the devas of the thirty together with Inda. I ask you who wear blue lotus garlands, and garlands on the forehead, whose skin resembles gold, adorned one, wearing the finest of robes. Who are you, lovely Devata, who are honoring me? What was the deed you did of yourself of old when in a former birth you were born a human being? Giving to well accomplished, or self-control, in practice of morality? By which are you, one of great renown, arisen in a good rebirth? Devata, when asked, explain of what deed this is the fruit. Then the Devata explained. As in story no. Verses, except for the substitution in ver. Of clod of earth for chair. Vimanavathu. Vimanavathu. Rajamala's mansion. The Bhageva was staying at Zavatha, in Jita Grove. Now at the little village of Gaya there lived a Brahmin who gave his daughter in marriage to a Brahmin's son. She in that house wielded authority, and took from the first a dislike to the daughter of a woman servant, scolding and abusing and hitting her. As the girl grew up she treated her worse. It is said, that in Kaspa Buddha's time their relations had been reversed. To prevent her mistress from pulling her hair when she beat her, she went to the barber's shop and had her hair shaved. Then the mistress in her anger saying she could not escape her by shaving the head, bound a cord about it, pulled her down with it, and did not allow her to remove it. Hence her name Rajamala. Now one day the teacher, emerging from an attainment of great compassion, surveyed the world, saw Rajamala's qualifications for the fruit of stream entry. Sotapanna, first stage of spiritual awakening. And sat under a tree emitting his rays. And wretched Rajamala, longing for death, took a jar and come along pretending to go for water, and looked for a tree on which to hang herself. Seeing the Buddha, with heart drawn towards him, she thought, what if the Bhagava would teach Dhamma to people even like me? I might be delivered from my miserable life. And he discerning said to her, Rajamala. And she, as if anointed with ambroya, drew near and saluted. He taught her the four truths and she attained the fruit of steam entry. Next he went to the village and sat beneath a tree. Unable now to destroy herself she thought with patience, amity and kindness. Let the Brahmin lady hurt and injure me or whatever she will, and went back taking water in her jar. The master of the house stood at the door and said. You've been long in fetching that water and your face is radiant. You appear to me in a completely different manner. What is it? She told him. And the Brahmin was pleased and went in saying, Don't you do anything more to Rajamala. Then he went quickly to the teacher and reverently invited him to a meal. After that he, the daughter-in-law and the Brahmin householders who had come in sat down near the teacher, who told them how things had been in that former life with her and Rajamala, with suitable discourse on Dhamma beside. He then returned to Savatthi and the Brahmin made Rajamala his adopted daughter, while the daughter-in-law treated her gently. Reborn when she died among the thirty-three, Rajamala also was interrogated by the venerable elder monk Mahamagalana. You who stand with surpassing beauty, Devata, 
to the accompaniment of music are dancing to, your, hands and feet assuming various gestures. While you are dancing with all your limbs in every way, devil-like sounds stream forth, delightful to hear. While you are dancing with all your limbs in every way, devil-like scents are wafted around, sweet scents are wafted around, sweet scents, delightful. While you are swaying your body, the sound of the trinkets in your braided hair is heard like the five-fold instrumental music. Eardrops breeze blown, trembling in the breeze the sound of these is heard like the five-fold instrumental music. And the perfume of those sweet-scented, delightful garlands on your head blows in all directions like the Manju Saka tree. You breathe that sweet scent, you see unearthly beauty. Davida, when asked tell of what deed this is the fruit. Asked thus by the elder that Davida, beginning with her own former birth, explained in these verses. Formerly I was a Brahmin servant girl at Gaya. Of little merit, unlucky, I was known as Rajumala. Brought low by abuse, blows and threats, I took a water jar, and going out went off to fetch water. Casting the water jar away from the road, I entered a woodland thicket, thinking. Here I will die, what use is life to me? Having made a strong noose and slung it on a tree, I looked round. Who now dwells in the wood? I saw there the self-awakened one, the sage friendly toward all the world, seated at the root of a tree, mating, with fear from no quarter. Then I had a wonderful, astounding thrill. Who now dwells in the wood? Man or Davida? Serene and faith-inspiring, from wood to open come, and what I saw brought peace of mind. This is not just anyone. Sense faculties guarded, delighting in mashin, mind not astray, this must be the awakened one, friendly toward all the world. Like a lion dwelling in its cave, arousing fear and awe, unassailable, it was a chance as rare to see as a Nujimabara flower. With gentle words the Tathagata spoke to me. Rajamala said to me, go to the Tathagata for refuge. When I had heard his voice, gentle, meaningful, sweet, soft, tender and lovely and dispelling all grief. The Tathagata, friendly toward all the world, knowing that my mind was pliant, had faith and was pure, instructed me. Thus is suffering he said to me this is the origin of suffering, this is the cessation of suffering, and the plunge into deathlessness is the direct way. Standing firm in the advice of the compassionate, the Rigtheus, I came to the deathless, to peace, Nibbana, the unchanging state. And I, standing firm with love by faith aroused in what was basic was unwavering in vision, own daughter to the awakened one. And I delight. I play. I rejoice with fear from no quarter. I wear devil like garland, I drink a sweet inducing suppleness. Sixty thousand musical instruments wake me from my sleep. Alamba, Gagara, Bhima, Sadhuvatan and Samsaya. Pakhara and Supasa. Vinamakha and other. Nanda as well as Sunanda, Sonadana, Susamita. Alambusa, Misakisi, and the pitiless one called Pundarika, Anafasa, Supasa, and Subhada, Mudukadini. These and other more lovely arouse the nymphs. In the morning they come to me and say, Come, we will dance, we will sing, come, let us delight you. Not for those with deeds of merit not done, for those alone with deeds of merit done is this Nandana, without grief, delightful, the great grove of the thirty. Not here nor beyond is there bliss for those with deeds of merit not done, but bliss there is here and beyond for those with deeds of merit done. For such as long for companionship, by these much righteousness must be done, for they who have done deeds of merit delight, rejoice in heaven. Tathagata s arise indeed for the welfare of many, worthy of men's gifts, sources for fields of merit in which, having done a deed of homage, the givers rejoice in heaven.